Happy 4th of July weekend everyone, my name's Danielle DeLate and you're in for a jam-packed show. In today's show we talk to David Duchovny at the Aquarius Season 2 premiere as he talks to us about his new music venture. Then we have a performance from yours truly as I got to perform in the OC this weekend. Next we have some juicy gossip with Jocelyn Polite and in our artist spotlight we have Fox Tracks. So let's get started and roll that intro. David Duchovny has been fortunate to be part of many successful TV series with the popular sci-fi drama X-Files, HBO's Californication and now NBC's Aquarius is celebrating its second season. But what many people don't know about David is that he's also a talented musician and we got the chance to talk to him about his upcoming album as well as some of his co-stars at the season 2 Aquarius premiere. Do you ever have one of those moments where suddenly you just understand everything? Just a hero on a bridge that's burning down. This country is going to burn. This is our message to the world. We're igniting the apocalypse. The world seems Helter Skelter. First and foremost, I want to ask you about your music and about recording and are you still recording and well, when can gonna, we expect? I'm going to be recording uh, hopefully at, at the uh, mid end of summer. Uh, got about 12 to 15 new songs that we're working on and just want to before we record just want to make sure they're exactly the way we want them. And how's it coming along? Can we expect an album soon? Yeah I would hope so. I would hope so in the fall. I mean I, 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 I would like that. I would like it. You know, I, I've never Music is kind of new to me, so I don't really know the pace. I don't know how quickly these things come together, you know? But well, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be great. And now on to Aquarius, <laughs> it's so important. Um, speaking of music, uh, one of the things that I love about the show is listening to the music, because I'm one of those people that love the 60s. So what about the 60s, has, what's inspired you for making Aquarius? Well, what I liked uh, for my, I mean, I love the music and I love the clothes and I love, you know, what we all love about the 60s. But all, what I really enjoyed about creating this character that I'm doing in the show is that he's not a guy of the 60s. He's my age in the 60s, which means he was raised in the 20s and 30s and 40s, came of age then. So he's really a, a different kind of a man than we've seen in a long time on television. He's not a new age sensitive cop. He's a badass. Tell me a little bit about your character and hunting, or I want to use the term hunting, but actually investigating Charlie Manson. Well, the truth is that Manson wasn't really on anybody's radar so much. So it's not really the kind of a show where we're investigating him. And the case closed fairly quickly after the murder. So it's not really that kind of a show. It's not really a police work show in that way. All the other cases that I'm involved with are, are, are not Manson related. They're fictional. And we're very much a cop show from the late 60s and not, not a Manson investigation show. So um, it's like we have two parallel shows running at the same time. And the, what's interesting is to watch how they converge. And what can we expect from season two? What can we expect from your character season two? Oh, a lot more nonsense, you know, a lot more drinking, a lot more fighting, a lot more bad behavior that leads to good police work. Yeah. That's awesome. I look forward to it. Tell me a little bit about the evolution of Brian and Sam in season two. Uh, well, originally, you know, I think that the writers and the, the creator, John Mack, uh, initially wanted us to be like a father-son thing and it does become that but it also becomes this in a sense a brotherhood you know and then um and then this season those values and that that i that idea is kind of challenged and we don't know you know really you'll see i mean it just kind of gets crazy and and uh i think deep down we know we're there for each other cops and arms and all that but i think that um there's just so much going on. I mean, this season really is, I think, a, a better representation of the 60s than the last season, you know, just because we are, we start out as one character and we all kind of become a different person by the end of this season. And that person that you become, would that be someone that you would hang out with? Would you hang out with your character in real life? No, I wouldn't hang out with either of them. 
the first or the second. No, I mean, I, I you know, I, I always like Shafe because he's this noble person who really cares about his family and doing the right thing. And then uh, this season really kind of, you question that, you know, you question if he's really sticking to his guns or, or whatever, because he gets involved with some things that really kind of just, um, just change him, you know, probably permanently. And last question, is it really eerie to work up, uh, up against a character like Charlie Manson, like to work up against that type of energy of that character? It's really eerie because, you know, it's this heinous thing that, that happened because of that man and his, his family. Um, it's, yeah, it's really, it's, it's eerie just the content all around it, you know, um, when, we, when we put together the Tate House and, and you know, when we walk on a set like your gut turns you know because you, you know how awful this is but it is history and I think that it's you know the only way to make sure history doesn't repeat itself is to tell those stories you know and um, it's yeah it's eerie. <laughs> tell me a little bit about what kind of preparation does it take to play someone so sinister? Um, yeah it takes a it, it was a lot of work just to just get my head in in the in the world of the 60s actually um, especially as a, you know trying to really understand what it must have been like to be a young person in the late 60s in, in a time of a lot of turmoil um, but and it, there was an exciting passion of liberation back then as well for young people and trying to really understand that was quite a quite a, a high hurdle and did a lot of listening to music to help that there's some great music from that period which uh, was really helpful and um, a lot of book reading watching documentaries and that kind of thing now we saw the, kind of the beginning stages of, of Charlie Manson and we you know we're seeing kind of the evolution of Charlie Manson what can we expect this season uh, this season um, we can sort of see it, the, those who know the history of, of the real events will know that 68 is when the stakes got even higher for him personally and, and the people around him about you know they made some real uh, big mistakes along the way about what the choices they made um, he gets very close to Hollywood music industry professionals because he's still in his own mind he wanted to be a record, a recording artist, and um, uh, so we see a little bit of the build-up towards that, and uh, we get ever closer to what we know are very tragic events. But um, you know, we're trying to do our best to do them justice. I can't wait. I'm really excited about it. I wanted to ask you, what was it like, or what is it like, to play a cop, a female cop, in the '60s on Aquarius? You know, it, it's it's such a rewarding role to be able to play um, because she's facing so many issues with equal rights and and you know equal opportunity far more so than women today face and it, it, it was quite heartbreaking to see what it was like for women at that time period so um, it's a, it's an incredible role she's such a strong woman she's really independent and driven and focused and inspired so it's pretty fun what did you learn most about the 60s basically by while while making this because I didn't know anything at all uh, I wasn't born in the 60s so I, I I didn't sort of have I had an idea about the time period but I didn't know a lot of the historical facts I didn't really speak to people firsthand until I got this role and then I started to do my research and ask questions and our showrunner John McNamara is like a wealth of knowledge he's an encyclopedia so I learned everything that I could about the time period and I love it it's like it's just from the costumes to the progression and the uh, you know the freedom of, of that time just, just really inspiring I love it too when I watch it it's like putting on an album listening to all the music and everything it's like really great what's the the, the fun part what's the best part about going to work on this series honestly everything it's the greatest job on earth but get putting that costume on and 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 sitting in the hair and makeup cha chair and transforming into this character from another time period you really feel like someone else and you really get to like embrace that role and that's what i love and then also i get to work with such epic amazing actors so that's a trip so tell me a little bit about what it's like to be on, just in this series with the 60s and the clothes and the music. I love everything about this show. I mean, it's so ambitious and complex. And as an actor, I get to do things that really challenge me and, and sometimes scare me. And so it's always, as an actor, that's the kind of work that you dream about. It's a dream job. <laughs> and what can we expect from your character in season two? Well, you know, I think in f the first season, Grace is really, she, we discover she's a woman who lives in a glass house. And that just, house shatters by the end of the season. So she can either pick up the pieces or she can make this bold choice to kind of live authentically. And, and that's what she does. And it's a bold choice for a woman in the late 1960s to kind of say, 
You know what? I'm going to go against everything that I've learned is right and follow my heart for maybe the first time ever. So I think this season is watching her kind of navigate that new life. And with the other characters on the show, are there any other characters that you see yourself relating to a lot or that you could have even seen yourself playing? That's a good question. I haven't gotten that question before. <laughs> Honestly, Grace is my top pick. She's always challenging me, and I'm always finding new, new pieces of the puzzle to put together to kind of create this character. So for me, that's been, it's, it's a great, great role. It's really fulfilling. And, and you are expecting, oh, and so when are you due? Tell us a little about it. Due early September, so I have like two and a half months left. I'm in the final stretch, third trimester. It's another boy. I have, I have a two-year-old boy, so my hands will be full. Yes, they will. Well, keep up the good work and congratulations on tonight. The carpet's over and I'm about to go inside and get a sneak peek of the season two premiere. I'm Jocelyn Polite and you've just been buzzed. This is Michaela McManus. Hi, I'm Claire Holt. Uh, my name is Gethin Anthony. I'm Gray Damon. Oh, hi, I'm David Duchovny. I've just been buzzed. We have more new music buzz after these messages. It's the return of the boom, return of the box Bass so low you can feel it when it drops Indoor, outdoor, powered by monster A blast from the past so you know it's gonna rock ya But we back to the future with this one We pump up the volume and you know you gon' get one The monster blaster, it's what we call it It's the subway, uh, king for uh, your boom uh, Come on everybody, let's all get down With powerful bi-directional sound The bottom solo it vibrates the ground From city to city and from town to town uh, So if you hip it or you hop it you pop locking, working out to the beat, and need the bass dropping. You're looking for an integrative subwoofer with twice the wattage, say monster products. Check, check it out, check, check. music entertainment news go to www.thenewmusicbuzz.com Need fast cash? We'll go to cityloan.com or call 877-553-9071 to borrow $3,000 or more using the equity in your paid off vehicle. The best part? No credit checks. Your car is your credit with City Loan. Over 99% of City Loan customers are in good standing every month. So call 877-553-9071 now. And get this, if you sign up today and you are approved for a loan, you will receive a $25 gift card from Target. Be sure to mention promo code TV ad to receive your gift card. Also, don't forget to like City Loan on Facebook at City Loan Community and follow us on Twitter at City Loan. Now back to the new music buzz. In our artist spotlight, we have the band Fox Tracks, who gives us an authentic blend of 60s soul, rock, and jazz. Let's check it out. How's it going, everybody? We're Fox Tracks, and you're watching the Buzz Artist Spotlight. John and I, we were playing with each other for a while, you know, uh, doing a two-piece thing, and Ben was in his own project for a minute, and I guess like when we all graduated college over the summers, we would come home and jam, and I guess one day we decided, wow, this is actually pretty good, so we just uh, went after it. Well, I guess it all started, we had decided that we took a cue from the band and Bon Iver, two groups who kind of went from their homes and ventured into the woods, and in isolation, they were able to form in my opinion, two of the greatest albums. I know my, my bandmates agree. And so we lived uh, at this cabin in North Carolina last year for about five, six weeks. And we basically wrote the whole cabin, a lot of other songs that didn't make the cabin. And it was just an amazing experience. And that informed all the songs we have now is the foundation of Fox Tracks. And I think we'll all look back at that moment in life and appreciate the innocence that we had then for sure. 
I would describe our sound uh, a nice mix of things. I think that growing up in the 21st century, we've had resources such as YouTube and Spotify to be able to go back and listen to a lot of old school stuff, sort of, you know, bands we grew up on and bands we might not have known until a little bit later in life, you know, going back and listening to some, you know, jazz artists from the 40s or 50s and soul artists and then bands like, you know, the Beatles, obviously, and Bob Dylan. And then also it's like a nice combination of that and bands we love from today, like Coldplay and The Killers and Arcade Fire and the Arctic Monkeys. And what we try to do we try to bridge that gap between that old school sort of style and that old school vibe with a new school alternative style and try to create something that is, you know, raw and familiar, yet also unique in some ways. We want people to be inspired after hearing Fox Tracks. We want people to feel like the dream is, is possible. You can go out there and no matter who you are, you could, you could do something that you love. And as long as you're a hard worker and love what you do, you're a successful person and, and we want people to feel that from listening to our music. And I think that fans really dig it and the more they come to shows, the more they understand what our live show is about and it's all about a give and a take of energy. The more energy the audience is giving us, the more energy we'll give them. So uh, I think fans are starting to realize that uh, and uh, as they start coming to more shows, they understand that you know we're going to play better if they give us more energy. So uh, I think that it's, it's, been, it's been growing steadily. I would say our single Underwater is, is a really deep look into what it means to be on the brink of something big but not quite there yet i think it's a it's an interesting fun alternative rock song pop song but you know lyrically and thematically it's uh it's all about just exploring the human condition and speaking to universal truths that we all share our Twitter and Facebook, our Twitter and Instagram handles are at Fox Tracks Band and www.facebook.com slash Fox Tracks Band. My name is Ben. My name is Jared. My name is John, and you've just been buzzed. After these messages, Jocelyn Polite fills us in on the Iggy Azalea and Nick Young breakup. <laughs> Welcome to this segment of Light It Up, where we blow up the spot on Music Entertainment's Not So Proud Moments. Team Niggy is over. Iggy Azalea called it quits with Lakers star Nick Young when she found home security footage of women coming and going from their home. But it gets worse. Nick has been hooking up with his baby's mama and high school sweetheart, Kiana Green, who is now pregnant. Now you remember back in March, Nick was caught on a secretly taped video admitting to cheating on his fiance. They tried to work it out, but the other day, the Australian rapper tweeted that she feels like she's been drop kicked out of a plane with no parachute. There's still no word from Nick on his side of the story since his one word tweet, single. This morning, she tweeted thank you to her friends for all of the support and the flowers. It looks like Iggy is officially done, and as she should be, there are plenty more fish in the sea. For more music news, go to www.thenewmusicbuzz.com and follow me at Jocelyn Polite. That'll do it for this segment of Light It Up. Peace out.
everybody, I'm Chanel Herland for the new Music Buzz. In July, I'll be covering behind the scenes of So You Think You Can Dance top 10 live shows. Let's have a look. They say big things come in small packages, so the search is on, America, for the biggest little surprises you've got. This is So You Think You Can Dance, the next generation. This season, we are looking for the best dancers that America has to offer, but they're all going to be kids. We're going to pick the 10 best. Oh, got a ticket! And they are going to be paired up with some of our favorite all-stars. We have all your favorite choreographers, and also we've got Maddie Ziegler, who's going to be a very, very special judge on the show. I'm hoping to bring something new so the kids can feel like they have someone more their age that they can go to for help. And I think it'll be cool, because like, we'll help each other. This is a completely different show. This is a completely different season. These kids are going to have stories to share. It reminds me of being that same kid and how passionate I was about growing up and experiencing life through dance. It's going to be up to the choreographers what we're able to pull out of these kids. One, two, three, four, five. The next generation is fierce. It is so amazing how such big personality comes out of such little people. We didn't hold back in our choreography, and they're bringing it. These kids literally could step on the stage and be professionals right now. That's how good they are. The contestants have grown up watching the show. They know what they're part of. Dancing is about the future. It's about the next generation of choreographers. It's about the next generation of directors. And to have this be focused on this next generation of dancers is just great. It's great. Are you ready? I'm Chanel Herlin and you've just been buzzed. That's all we have. Special thanks to Ellie Ripley, Jeanette Elliott, David Duchovny, the cast of Aquarius and Drew G. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and double tap us on Instagram, all at The New Music Buzz. This weekend, I got the chance to perform in the OC at the Yoast Theatre to kick off my Light Up The Night Club Tour. So taking you out is me with Light Up The Night. I'm Danielle Delate and I'll be back at you like a boomerang. Buzz is brought to you by Spinnable. View life in 360. City Loan, get cash for your car today. And Rockwell Watch's innovative design. For more music entertainment news, go to www.thenewmusicbuzz.com. Peace out.